It's time to bring in Dan McClory to discuss the impact. He is the managing director and head of China for Valstead Securities. Dan, thanks very much as always for joining us. We appreciate it. Tough news for the markets, but I want to start with the U.S. Treasury designating China as a currency manipulator. What kind of impact is that going to have? Well, I think there's going to be a tremendous impact. It's something that hasn't been done literally in decades. And I actually think the discussion of putting that label on China today in some part contributed to the market decline. You know, those stories, the tumbling of markets, global markets, the major indices in the U.S. Um, is, is sort of top of the charts here in New York. But something extraordinary happened today on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. A Chinese investment bank that focuses on the Greater Bay Area actually raised $200 million, including an oversubscription in their initial public offering. And not only did the share price not go down, it actually went up by 20 percent. And that company whose price went up 20 percent is AMTD. And I have to tell you, full disclosure, we were a co-manager of that offering. But I think it just shows how some smart China watchers know that investing in the Chinese finance space is a good ticket. Um, in terms of, of your question, this is unprecedented for the U.S. to attach that label to China. And it's not going to be taken lightly. It wasn't. Uh, again, we saw the market reaction. Mm -hmm. And I think it's only the beginning of more things to come. Well, that's uh, sobering news. But one thing that certainly grabbed the attention of U.S. farmers, the unconfirmed reports that Chinese state-owned enterprises will no longer purchase agriculture products. Now, what can this do to an already inflamed situation? And presumably, China will continue to turn to Brazil and other nations to buy soybeans and other products. Well, they sure will, Sean. That's exactly what they're going to do, Brazil and Argentina. You know, there might be some temporary relief for the U.S. to send soy up to Canada and have it maybe somehow find its way into China. But as you know, President Trump has given time and time again special assistance to farmers uh, in, the, in the Midwest just to offset the effect of this now lack of buying, now this prohibition of buying. So that was also a pretty strong card for China to play. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's up to Mr. Trump to respond. Yeah. And uh, talking about the next move, the yuan is now at a historic or near historic point, a seven to one ratio. How is this going to impact Chinese exporters? Uh, I think you can find very few people who believe this is going to be the punch that brings them to their knees. Apparently, that is the hope of the Trump administration. Well, it's not. I mean, it just defies economics. So now Chinese exporters will have an even greater advantage. And let's push the U.S. off to the side. Now Chinese goods will become even more economical for other countries, including Southeast Asia. So it's certainly a lever that China could pull, and they did decide to pull it in some regard. Um, but I think it's just going to open up more alternative markets for China instead of limiting them to this U.S. dependency, which obviously there isn't. Uh, let's talk about the global markets for just a second uh, before we get on to, uh, to other issues, because uh, certainly uh, it's a very tense situation. A lot of people are very concerned about where this is going. What is the devaluation going to do? What is the fact that the U.S. stock market has been in kind of a free-for-all the past couple of days? How is that going to impact things? Well, certainly the uncertainty is what's affecting everyone. And when when parties walk away from the bargaining table, I think that's the biggest uncertainty, that's the biggest fear, is that if the U.S. and China are now making moves on each other that are going to lead to the suspension um, of these talks and the, and the lack of a resolution, I think that started to get priced into the markets sometime last week when things in Shanghai didn't turn out as expected and certainly hit full tilt over the weekend and now into the U.S. Monday. So it's, it, it's very much markets being uncertain. They, they like consistency. They mm -hmm. don't like to not know what could be coming up next. Yeah, so, Mark, I mean, it, I'm sorry, go ahead. It's going to put more pressure on the U.S. to respond. Literally, the ball is in the U.S.'s court right now to come back and, and, uh, and do something. And, and, and China has said, you know, we've uh, met force with, with, with greater force. You know, uh, we can talk about a lot of things, but clearly everybody wants to know where this is going. Uh, what can you say about the two sides right now? Uh, they appear to be the ship righted to a degree when U.S. President Trump and President Xi seem to come to that agreement. Now it's a flip of the coin. Everything's up in the air. It really is. And, you know, some observers are saying that President Trump has overplayed the situation and that he absolutely needs to reel this back in uh, in the lead up to the election. And I would I would tend to agree with that. Uh, others have said that, again, China may exercise its right to just stop negotiating. We're we're, we're done. 
you know, we're going to wait and watch this play out now in the U.S. So, you know, getting China back to the table and Trump still being able to utilize this as a way to beat his base and to move towards re-election is, is a major challenge. Yeah, Dan, thanks very much. And in Trump's world, he can't come away looking like there's any kind of loss. So it's going to be interesting to see where everything goes. Dan, thanks very much. Dan McClory, Managing Director and Head of China for Balstead Securities. As always, a pleasure to have you on the program, sir. Thank you, Sean.